yeah. you seem to like too much that way. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like it too. <laughs> Hello there, I'm Peter Schickele, joining the Ferdare Trio, Walter Ferdare Violin, Elsa Ludwig Ferdare Clarinet, and guest pianist Catherine Brown. This is the third program in the trio's Making of a Medium series, part two, documenting new works for the Violin Clarinet Piano Trio. Today we present another from the more than 130 works written in the past three decades for and commissioned by the Ferdare Trio and Michigan State University, where they are in residence. Now we join the trio on a journey to Scotland to visit Yester, the home and castle of composer Giancarlo Minotti. Maestro Minotti has long been one of the great figures of the 20th century musical world. His operas are performed all over the world and include Amelia Goes to the Ball, The Old Maid and the Thief, The Medium, The Consul, The Telephone, The Saint of Bleecker Street, and perhaps his most famous work, A Mall and the Night Visitors, written for NBC television. The trio for violin, clarinet, and piano, commissioned by the Ferdare Trio and Michigan State University, was completed in 1996. The first two movements were premiered by the trio on the composer's 85th birthday at the Spoleto Festival on July 7, 1996. And the third movement was subsequently completed for the composer's visit to Michigan State University in September of 1996. The creation of a piece of music is not always a simple or quick process. In this case, it took a number of years but it did result in Minotti's most recent major work, called simply Trio for Violin, Clarinet, and Piano. We have a unique documentation of the creation of this trio. First, an interview with Maestro Minotti from the summer of 1991, when Walter Ferdare traveled to the Spoleto Festival in Charleston to interview him before the trio was composed, and then, the 1998 interview at his home in Scotland two years after the completion of the work. Let's hear what he had to say before he started writing the piece. I'm very interested uh, in uh, how a, uh, a composer uh, conceives uh, instruments and, uh, and approaches uh, the writing of a work and so uh, yesterday we spoke a little bit about the clarinet and you mentioned you you like the Chalumeau register could I just ask you to speak a little about char characterizing how you uh, what you feel about the personality of the clarinet and of course with our well, we know we, we, we change in life um, I must confess that uh, when I was younger I did not like the clarinet very more very much and my my favorite instrument was the oboe because I like the melancholy uh, sound of the oboe and uh, uh, and the clarinet I found that, that especially in the high mm. register would seem to be a bit harsh and, and shrill and uh, then uh, one changes uh, all of a sudden now uh, the clarinet has become one of my favorite instruments I use it a great deal in my in um, my compositions but I like especially the lower part of the clarinet and uh, and why, why I like the sort of guttural, honeyed sound that it has in the lower register. And it reminds you, it does it remind you of something? Yes, but I always think of that, of, of, some, of the voice of a, of, a, of a Russian femme fatale. <laughs> you know, those, 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 uh, yes. those women with a lovely deep voice, I think. <laughs> Now let's join him in his studio at Yester House in Scotland and hear what he had to say following the creation of this trio. We had an interview early on uh, with, after you promised to write for us. Well, you know the story of, 
of your piece. <laughs> it, is a, it is a rather dramatic story, but you know how long it took for me to write it. I, uh, you know, I'm, uh, although you keep telling me that I look very young, I know that I'm an old wreck. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, and uh, when you, I accepted the, uh, the commission, I thought I, uh, uh, I, that I was ready to write some, some good uh, chamber music. And, uh, but I didn't realize that my brain is being uh, dehydrated <laughs> and uh, that uh, the flow of inspiration that used to feed my brain was uh, uh, gone, long, gone long ago. Well. So I, I, after I, I did the first movement, that, that uh, no, actually the second movement is the one that movement. I wrote first. That I, I wrote it quite uh, uh, easily. Yeah. And then, uh, then I just stopped and I just felt I, I, was, I, I, didn't have, uh, I couldn't go on. Well, and you, then, uh, then as you know, you kept calling up my, yeah. my daughter in law. Yes. yes. And uh, she, I think she fell in love with your voice. Oh, that's nice. Because uh, <laughs> she kept telling me, oh, that poor Mr. Verde, how can I tell him that you're not it? And, uh, but week after week, month after month, year after year, you kept calling. Oh. Finally, my, my daughter-in-law came to me and said, Giancarlo, if you don't finish that piece, I'm going to go into your studio and I'm going to finish it myself. Well, you know, Melinda is not, uh, it, it's not very musical, so that threat uh, frightened me. So I decided I better squeeze some more music out of my brain, and then I, and that's how you got the, the next two movements. We're very grateful to her and to Chip also. Next, we go to the concert room of Yester and listen to the Fair Dare Trio perform the first movement of the trio, Capriccio. Thank you. 
And now the second movement, Romanza. This was actually the first movement to be completed. Even though it wasn't on the menu, it was given to Walter and Elsa Ferdare in October 1995 at breakfast in New York's Carlisle Hotel.
I was interested your title for the last movement, Envoy. Uh, did, did that come after you had the idea for the piece? You know, the last movement is always difficult when you have a suite. Uh, yes. It's difficult to find a, a title for the last, uh, really, it's, it's uh, saying goodbye to somebody. Yes, yes. And uh, so I like the, the, uh, the word envoy. I think it's a, po a lovely poetic word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to have written it because uh, uh, I must say that uh, of all the music I've written so far, and probably maybe may all that I've, I write, uh, I like my uh, chamber music best. Really? I really do. I think it is the, the more subtle uh, uh, music that I've written. And, uh, and if, if I were to keep uh, uh, some of my music and throw away the rest. I would throw away all my operas. Oh, no. And I would only keep uh, my songs, uh, the uh, Cante della Lontananza that I wrote for Schwarzkopf. I would keep my five tenor songs. I would keep uh, the sonata for two cellos and piano. I would uh, keep your trio. Uh, and I would... Uh, uh, what else would I keep? Uh, I think that that's about all. That's that's what I really like best of of. Uh, and the, and the um, oh yes, the suite for two cellos and piano yes. that I wrote for Piotrowski. Piotrowski. You kept encouraging me by saying that Piotrowski kept after you also for a long time. He explained what kind of a concerto I should write for him. And he would say, most people will tell you that uh, uh, you have to be careful not to let the orchestra uh, cover the cello and to, to have a small orchestration, but not for me. He said, I want you to use a, a, 
it's a kind of a Strauss orchestra, a huge orchestra, because I can play against any orchestra, and you can just uh, don't use all brass that you want. Don't be afraid of covering me, because I will always be heard. So I said, yes, uh, uh, I remember that. Then next week, I would, or two weeks afterwards, I would see him again. He would say, well, how's my concerto coming? I said, well, I'm just, uh, I'm a bit late, but uh, I'm beginning. He said, you know, I, I want to tell you how, to, uh, I don't know what I, uh, but, but uh, if I explain to you the kind of concerto I want. You know, everybody thinks that concerto is, that the cello is gloomy and sentimental and, and I want you to write something very light, you know, with a little orchestra and and, uh, and uh, very happy, uh, and, and so that the uh, the cello can be absolutely wonderful, light, scarlatti, and then as a fine. Then two weeks would go by, and then I would see again. I said, "How's my concerto?" And I said, "Well, I think that I will start it now. One of these days." I, but uh, what are you going to write? How, what kind of a concerto are you going to write? I said, I don't, I said please uh, don't write a concerto. Don't write a concerto because I, I hate conductors. I hate conductors. I hate to play with the orchestra. Conductors are all in love with themselves. And they, 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 I'm a modest person. I don't want to show off. Uh, but I like to do, why don't you do something for, for me and one of my pupils? Just do, do something very, don't just have to be with the rock, with the piano, but, but something for, so I like that, that idea best. And that's how I wrote the, the concerto for, no, the suite for two cellists and piano, and yeah. it came out to get a yeah, good piece. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs>